Welcome back. So we're talking about the Laplace transform, which is one of my absolute favorite uh, transforms in mathematics. So the Laplace transform, you can think of it as a generalization of the Fourier transform, where you can now take the transform of badly behaved functions that don't decay to zero uh, at plus or minus infinity. So the Laplace transform in some sense is a weighted, one-sided Fourier transform for badly behaved functions. Uh, and what I'm gonna do today is walk you through some of the kind of examples of things you can do with the Laplace transform. So I mentioned before that we can turn PDEs into ODEs, ODEs into algebraic equations, and it's useful in control theory. So right now I'm gonna walk you through how to compute uh, the Laplace transform of certain types of functions and give you some examples, okay? So probably the most important is, and I'm gonna denote the Laplace transform as curly L of a function F, uh, let's say f of t is going to equal f bar of s. Okay, that's uh, that's how I'm going to denote this f bar of s is the Laplace transform of some function of t. And the first property I'm going to show you is what is the Laplace transform of df dt. So if I have the derivative of my function, what happens when I Laplace transform it? And I'm gonna remind you, because the Laplace transform is so intimately related to the Fourier transform, it's basically the Fourier transform of a modified version of the function, uh, we're gonna recover a lot of our favorite properties of the Fourier transform with the Laplace transform. And this is how we're going to be able to simplify these equations is through this property here. Okay, so the Laplace transform of df dt, I'm literally just going to plug that into this formula down here, and I'm going to get, uh, that is the integral from zero to infinity of df dt, e to the minus st, and I'm going to integrate with respect to time, so integral with respect to dt. And now, remember our integration by parts, we're going to say that this is u, and this is dv. And so the integration by parts tells me that the, the uh, definite integral of u dv is uv minus the definite integral of v du. So this is going to equal uh, uv, so e to the minus st, and if this is dv, then v is just f, Okay, so this is uh, uv, and again, we have to integrate at the bounds zero to infinity, minus the definite integral zero to infinity of v du. Okay, and again, v is just f of t, and du with respect to t is minus s, so I'm gonna, my minus s makes this a plus s, e to the minus st dt. All right, so I'm just gonna, slow down and remind you. The derivative of e to the minus st with respect to time is minus s e to the minus st. And so that minus uh, integral becomes a plus s integral. Good. And so I'll just put under braces. This is, uh, this is u, this is v, this is v, and this whole thing is du. du equals minus s e to the minus st. Good, and so this is actually really, really simple. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to evaluate. So this whole thing on the right, this integral right here is just the Laplace transform of f times s. So this is just s times f bar. And now I have to evaluate uh, this definite part, this, this part here, okay? And so this is going to equal, uh, and this is kind of fun e to the minus st, if I evaluate it at, positive, at t equals positive infinity, this equals zero, okay? And so this whole thing equals zero on this bound, and so then it's minus this whole thing evaluated at zero. So I'm gonna get minus e to the zero, which is one, f of zero, minus f of zero, plus s times the Laplace transform of f. And so that is the, the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function is s times the Laplace transform of the function minus the initial condition, minus that function evaluated at time zero. Okay, so uh, the Laplace transform of df dt equals 
the Laplace transform of my regular function minus the initial condition, minus f at, at time zero. And this is an absolutely incredibly useful formula because it allows me to take differential equations and turn them into uh, polynomials in S. So if I had a second derivative of f with respect to t, this would become an s squared. If I had a third derivative, this would become an x cubed. And so if I have a differential equation in terms of multiple higher derivatives of f with respect to t, those all just turn into polynomials in s times the Laplace transform of regular f, just f, f bar. And that's really useful. So we're going to see how to do that uh, in a little bit. Good. Other properties that are really important, so I'm going to put a star because uh, that is absolutely really, really important, um, two stars. The other property I'm going to tell you about is if I take the Laplace transform of um, f of t convolution integral with g of t, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm not going to derive this one because it takes a little bit of time, but this is exactly like the Fourier transform of convolution, so I'm going to point you to that video, um, and if I forget to link to it, uh, just write in the comments and I will, I will link to it. Uh, but this is going to equal the product of the Laplace transform of f, regular product times the Laplace transform of g, so it's going to equal f bar of s times g bar of s. And this is really nice because convolution integrals are generally hard to compute. This is just the product of two functions in the Laplace domain. So if I have a convolution integral, I just Laplace transform and I get the product of the individual Laplace transform of f and the Laplace transform of g. And this is really useful in control theory. So this is how we handle transfer functions in control theory. So this is another very, very useful property that we're going to use all the time uh, in solving PDEs and control theory are really kind of these two big properties. Okay, good. Uh, and I will show you how to do some of those properties, how to use those for PDEs and ODEs uh, in, in the next video. I think now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through some kind of homework examples, like compute the Laplace transform of this function or that function, because a lot of you have asked me for those kinds of problems in the past. Okay, before I do that, I want to point out a couple of fun facts about Laplace, one of my absolute favorite mathematicians, uh, Pierre Simon Laplace. Um, he was one of the, he provided perhaps the first satisfactory explanation of why the planets in the solar system are stable and don't fling off to infinity. So after kind of Kepler and Newton and Galileo, that was still a big open problem is even if we know F equals MA and the physics, how do all of the planets actually stay in stable orbits together? That was uh, first satisfactorily explained by Laplace, which I think is really interesting. Um, he also posited gravitational collapse, which is kind of the predecessor of our idea of black holes. Um, and he was also one of Napoleon's examiners. Um, Actually, I think this one's kind of fun. Uh, a lot of Laplace's writings, he would write, uh, if there was some derivation that was long and ugly, sometimes he would just write, it is easy to see that dot, 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 and he would bypass all of that heavy math. And so he kind of was one of the original mathematicians that said, you know, it's obvious that, or it's clear that, or it's trivial that. And so I think that's kind of fun. Okay, good. <laughs> so let's do a couple of quick examples here. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to take the Laplace transform. What if f of t was equal to 1? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Laplace transform of this function and I'm going to convince you that it's really easy to do. So f bar of s is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 times e to the minus st dt. Really easy. What's the integral of e to the minus st with respect to time? Well, with respect to time, s is just a constant. And so I get minus 1 over s. Uh, yeah, minus 1 over s, uh, e to the minus st. That's, that's the integral of e to the minus st. But remember, this is a definite integral. And so now I have to evaluate this at 0 and infinity. Okay, and again, uh, at t equals infinity, this whole thing is zero. So this equals zero minus minus one over s e to the minus s 
times zero. So now I evaluate at t equals zero. And e to the zero is one, so this equals minus of minus is plus one over s. So one over s, this function here, one over s, is the Laplace transform of the constant one. These are Laplace transform pairs. And it's that easy. That's how easy it is to compute the Laplace transform of a function. You just take that function, plug it in, and crank through the integral. And a lot of us, you know, we've spent a lot of time getting really good at these kinds of integrals, so this is kind of fun uh, when, you, when you do this, okay? Um, good, what's another example? Another example would be, um, let's say f of t, maybe I'll do a slightly different color, I'll do blue. Let's say f of t equals uh, e to the, what is it, e to the, uh, I'm just going <laughs> to look at my notes. Yeah, okay, if it's e to the at, so we see these functions all the time as solutions of ODEs, PDEs, and in control theory. These, this is e to the at is the basic solution of a linear system of differential equations, so we might want to Laplace transform that. So the Laplace transform of e to the at, again, I'm going to just go through and say f bar of s equals integral 0 to infinity of e to the at times e to the minus st dt. Uh, I can combine those exponentials and I get uh, e to the a minus s t dt. Again, need to keep my definite integral. That is going to equal 1 over a minus s e to the a minus s t. And this whole thing is going to be evaluated at the bounds of integration from 0 to infinity. Okay, And so now I'm going to, again, uh, if I plug in t equals infinity or t equals zero, I'm going to get different uh, answers here. And so I'm going to say that, again, if I plug in positive infinity, we assumed that we multiplied this thing by a stable enough uh, e to the gamma t that this decays to zero at positive infinity. So this is going to be uh, zero minus one over a minus s e to the a minus s evaluated at t equals zero. Okay, and so I get minus minus, this is 1 over s minus a. So again, the Laplace transform of e to the at is just 1 over s minus a. And in control theory, uh, those of you who have studied control theory know that this is a simple transfer function with a pole at s equals a. That is the same thing as saying that my differential equation that generated this had an eigenvalue of a. And so it's really, really easy to compute the Laplace transform of simple functions using this formula here. Uh, and you could do the Laplace transform of cosine, of sine, of the heavy side function, of all kinds of different functions, and you would get nice, easy to interpret solutions just by cranking through the integral. Now it turns out that the inverse Laplace transform can be kind of hairy. Okay, so this inverse Laplace transform you usually need to use complex uh, integral theory or complex analysis to compute these integrals. So inverse Laplace transforming this is much more complicated than doing the, the forward or direct Laplace transform. You need things like Bromwich integrals, uh, which sound delicious but are not. And uh, so usually I give the examples of doing forward Laplace transforms because the inverse Laplace transform is pretty hairy. Okay, good. Uh, so let's just summarize. The Laplace transform uh, invented by Pierre Simon Laplace um, is a generalization of the Fourier transform. It basically allows you to take Fourier transforms of nasty, ill behaved functions by, it's like a one sided weighted Fourier transform given by this. But it has a lot of the same properties, so uh, the Laplace transform of derivatives is just the Laplace variable times the Laplace transform of the regular function without taking the derivative, minus the initial condition. So the Fourier transform formula for a derivative looks a lot like this, but the Laplace transform has this initial condition minus f naught, and that's going to be really important when we solve ODEs and PDEs using the Laplace transform. You also get the same convolution integral formula, and it's really easy to take the Laplace transform of our favorite functions. Okay, so next time I'm going to show you how to uh, simplify ODEs by using this property here and turning them into algebraic functions. All right, thank you.